try to keep it real today. Let's see here. At least for this class. I can't make any guarantees for like Friday, but anyway, I'll begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father, we uh, thank you uh, for this day again. I thank you for this class and this time we have to meet and study your creation. Just pray that you would uh, be glorified in what we do this day, Lord. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. So, um, let me just summarize for you guys um, the uh, um, eigenvector technique. So like here's the here's a summary. Number one, you write your system of first order differential equations in the form dr dt equals to a times r. All right? Step number two. So you have to identify your, your matrix of um, it's a matrix of numbers, all right, that characterizes the differential equation. Step number two is you um, find zeros, let's call them lambda one, lambda two, da da da, lambda r for the characteristic equation. Now the characteristic equation is the determinant of A minus lambda times the identity matrix equals to zero. This is the characteristic equation. So you want to find all the zeros for that, all right? And by the way, just to, you know, just to let you know what's coming, this is an n by n matrix, and this right here is a nth order polynomial equation in lambda, which is good news. That means that we can solve it, and we can expect that there are n roots possibly repeated, right? Um, so that's good. Then step three is for each, um, you know, lambda i, or let's say j, we solve um, a times uj vector equals to lambda j uj vector um, aka, and this is actually an easier way to solve it, a minus lambda j times the identity matrix times uj vector equals to zero. So um, uh, non-zero solution is an eigenvector, or if you like, a proper vector for A with eigenvalue lambda j. It is important that it's non-zero. If your equations lead you um, to the conclusion that your eigenvector must be zero, well then, it's not an eigenvector. See, because we're looking for non-zero vectors for our solution, right? And then step four, step four in all this is we build the solution. Build the general solution. And it looks like y is equal to c1 um, e to the lambda 1 t u1 plus c2 e to the lambda 2 t u2 plus da 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 plus cn e to the lambda n t u n. And there's a, there's, a, there's a fine print here. Okay, this won't always work, assuming uh, there exist u1, un linearly independent vectors. Um, so what I mean is that you can find n distinct eigenvectors, all right? And um, I don't want to burden you with a technical definition of linear independence or anything like that in here, but we'll know it when we see it, okay? Um, it'll be painfully obvious when we don't have enough eigenvectors. 
But if we do have enough eigenvectors, if we have n of them, and they're linearly independent, then this is the general solution, right? And then there's a step five. <coughs> there's a step five here, is if uh, you're given that like r of say time t naught is equal to r naught, all right? So this is an initial condition. Then what do you do? Plug it in, right? And that will give you, you know, r naught is equal to c1 e to the lambda 1 t naught um, u1 plus da 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 plus cn e to the lambda n t naught u sub n, right? And in general, it's kind of scary. I mean, it's not too scary, but in general, what you're up against is n equations and n unknowns, right? Because here, this is a system of, this is just a plain old system of linear equations. So you have n linear equations in n unknowns. What are my unknowns? So my unknowns here would be like C1, C2, da 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 da, Cn. The name of the game to find the solution to the initial value problem is to find the constants that give you that initial value when you put it into the general solution, right? So that, that's, that's it for the homogeneous problem. Now there's a follow-up to this, which is what if you had a non-homogeneous problem, how do you deal with that? And we'll get to that eventually, but um, even, even the non-homogeneous problems, um, the, the homogeneous part of the answer is, is the, you know, the basis, the fundamental building block, if you will, for the problem. Um, so there's another question that's kind of obvious here, which is like, well, wait a minute, you said there's not always enough eigenvectors, right? So what do we do if there's not enough eigenvectors? Another question to think about. This is an nth order polynomial equation. Do those always have real solutions? Not always, right? There are ones that have complex solutions, and so those must somehow involve complex, a little bit of complex number math, and we'll have to do that. But not today, because as I promised at the start, we're keeping it real, so. <laughs> Sorry. It's, let's see, it's, 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 it's very bad, but I, I am a dad, so I'm allowed this joke. Let's see here. Um, there you go. So I think last time, I gave us a problem to work on, and I, I, I set it up, but I didn't solve it, right? And that was the following system of differential equations. I said we could look at xy prime equals to 1, 2, 2, 1, xy, right? We started with a, um, if you look back last class, we did this. I converted it from a system of differential equations, right, to that matrix problem. Now I'd like to show you how to solve this with the eigenvector technique, all right? And just to complete the thought, I'll even add initial conditions with, um, you know, uh, we'll put the point one comma two when t equals two, oh, let's make it zero to make our life easy. All right, so I even, I slapped on an initial condition. That wasn't even there last time. <coughs> all right, so we'd like to solve this. Okay? So first of all, let's recognize what's going on. This is A. So step one is done, right? We've, we've already recognized what A was in last class. Now we need to find our eigenvalues. All right, so let's calculate uh, the eigenvalues. Oh, by the way, uh, just a point of order here, guys. Uh, up to this point, I've been just kind of ad hoc applying integral techniques to various problems, right? And we had a few sneaky tricks here and there, right? Like the integrating factor technique. And you could kind of pay half attention and still pretty much make it in here. That ceases to be the point from here on out. You must pay attention to the theory and apply it logically. If you don't do that, you'll be faced with problems that are just insurmountable. Like you have to pay attention from this point on in the course. It's just the case, okay? So just a warning, if you've been like kind of like skipping along and like, 
hearing 30% of what I say and still making it. That's true. That's great. Up till now, that's totally possible because pretty much we've just integrated, right? We separate, we integrate half the time. This, I don't think is intuitive, right? This is a sneaky technique. It doesn't seem like we're just integrating, does it? So anyway, so let's get to it. Now that I've scared you, maybe not. You're not easily scared. You're, you're battle hardened. This is like your fourth calculus class. You don't believe in the danger anymore. Um, let's see, here's a, I'm just kidding. Um, it's all not, but <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll stop. A minus lambda I equals the determinant. I do want you guys all to pass. Um, one minus lambda two, two, one minus lambda. All right, let me put some dividers in just so you're sure that we understand each other. This I is equal to the two by two, two by two identity matrix here. That's all that means. So when I multiply that by lambda, it puts a minus lambda on, on all the diagonals. All right, and then what is this? Well, this here is one minus lambda quantity squared minus two squared, right? And I'm gonna rewrite that as lambda minus one squared minus two squared just because, well, why not? And then I'm going to do algebra. See, um, this is the difference of squares. You guys know about the difference of squares? I hope you do, because it is a general pattern. If we have a squared minus b squared, we should look at that, we should go, oh, that's a plus b times a minus b, right? Difference of squares. So this is lambda minus one plus two. Lambda minus one minus two. Do I need to foil it back out and use the quadratic equation like some sort of robot? No, I should think through the algebra. Think through the algebra. And so when I do that, and hopefully I don't make a mistake because that would be hilarious at, this, hilarious at this point, right? Um, usually if I, well anyway, so that's lambda plus one. I think I got a lambda minus three, right? So apparently there are two zeros here. Right? So we either get lambda 1 equals to minus 1 or lambda 2 equals to 3. These are my eigenvalues. The eigenvalues of A here. All right? So we have now um, successfully completed uh, step 2. Step 2 is done. Now step three has a couple parts, right? We have to find an eigenvector for each eigenvalue. So there could be a fair amount of calculation here in general. Here it's not too bad though. So let's start out with lambda equals to minus one. So I usually do something like this. I write lambda, lambda one equal minus one. So I'm looking at a um, minus a minus one i, which is equal to, in this case, um, 1, 2, 2, 1, plus 1, 0, 0, 1, right? So that is 2, 2, 2, 2, all right. And I'm trying to solve 2, 2, 2, 2 times, let's say, uv equal to 0, 0, all right? So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna let u1 vector equal to uv um, where a minus, I'm sorry guys, I, uh, a plus i u1 equal to zero. Sorry, I just squeeze it in there. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find a u1 vector such that a plus i times u1 equal to zero. What does that amount to? So I need to invent variables. I, I use u and v as sort of disposable variables here for the components of u1. And so you got this system of two equations, right? <coughs> so can you guys, you can kind of see what goes on here, right? It's really just what? One equation, right? This, so if you, if you convert this to scalar equations, we've got 2u plus 2v equals to zero, and we've got 2u plus 2v equals to zero from the second row. 
right? <laughs> Going back to scalar notation. But do we need two of these? No, we do not. So just take whichever one you like. I'll pick the first one. And um, that's kind of a joke. So V equals to minus U is the solution for that, right? And U is free. So thus, I can choose U equals to 1 and find, um, you know, u1 vector equals to 1 minus 1. There we go. I'll make a remark. You know, choice of eigenvector. <laughs> Never unique. See, because the thing is, if one vector works, any scalar multiple of that vector is also going to work, right? Remember what we're trying to solve. Like, think about it. We're trying to solve, at the base of things, a times u vector equals to lambda u vector, right? We're trying to find a non-zero vector to solution to that. What happens if I just slip a scalar multiple in there? Yeah, right. So I could, precisely, I've still got A times Cu is equal to lambda times Cu, right? So like, if you get one eigenvector, um, you get infinitely many of them, right? And when you study systems of linear equations, it has to be this way, right? Because if you're getting more than one solution to the homogeneous problem, it must be that the matrix in question is not invertible, which is to say that the determinant's zero, which is how we found this matrix to start with, like this lambda, right? Anyway, so I don't want to get back into all that, but um, anyway, I'm just saying you should expect that you have to make an ad hoc choice to fix the eigenvector if you want a specific one, and I do usually. So my choice is almost always to, you know, make the constant one because that makes it nice. Other nice choices are to choose the constant so that the length of the eigenvector is one. This is a common choice in calculators. If we were going to do that, I would make u equal to like one over root two and that would make the v equal to minus 1 over root 2, and then we'd have a unit vector. That's a common choice by technology, because we're going to talk about how to use technology to calculate eigenvectors, right? Um, certainly, you can solve the 2 by 2 problems on my test. That's great. But in the real world, you'll come across bigger problems, right? And you'd like to know how to solve those as well, and we'll talk about that. Um, there's certainly, you can do it with MATLAB, but there are other ways. Any questions so far? Yeah. I mean, there's no restriction on you. So the solution set is like infinite. The whole line, the whole line V equals minus U is the solution set here. It's like, if you think about solving two equations and two unknowns, there are three cases, right? You have parallel lines with a y-intercept that's not the same. There's no solutions. You have skew lines. There's just a unique, in, a, a unique solution where they, they cross, right? The other possibility is that when you have two equations and two unknowns, it's the same line. And that's the situation we'll be in in the eigenvector problem because the solution set is infinite. So, yeah. But we take away its freedom and we put it equal to 1. So, you know. Now, lambda equals to 3. Lambda 2 equals to 3. We've got, we're, we're trying to solve, I'll just get straight to the point here. We're trying to find u2 equal to uv. Now, I'm, I'm reusing these variables. They, I, these are disposable variables. So when I get, in, get into the next eigenvalue, I'm no longer thinking of u and v as the same variables as I was in the previous part of this discussion, all right? I have, um, for you computer science majors, what do you call this? A core dump or something? I don't know. Some kind of memory relocation. I, whatever you want. Uh, so with a minus 3i, u2 equal to 0. 
All right, so that gives me um, minus 2, 2 to minus 2 uv equal to 0, 0. And you see what happened here again. We've got minus 2, um, minus 2u plus 2v equal to 0. Do I need the second equation? I do not, right? By the way, this is a good check. If you calculated your eigenvalues correctly, it must be the case that these two equations are either the same equation. Sometimes what happens is the second equation just gets zeroed out. That can happen sometimes. But you should not find two distinct equations for the two-dimensional problem. Because if you did, there would only be the zero solution, right? So <clears throat> this tells me that v is equal to u. v is equal to u. Again, we can say u is free, so choose u equal to 1. Set u equals to 1. We get u2 equal to apparently 1, 1. All right, great. So now we have found our eigenvectors. Right. I should make a remark. Once you get good at this, you don't actually even have to write down some of these equations. Like you can just look at the matrix and write down the solution. Because if you think about it, you're trying to find a, a vector that when you multiply it by the matrix, it gives you zero, right? So you're looking for a vector which is perpendicular to every row of the matrix. What vector is perpendicular to 2, 2? Just this equal components, but often uh, different in magnitude, right? 1 minus 1 is obviously perpendicular to that. What's perpendicular to minus 2, 2? Well, 1, 1, right? 1, 1 is perpendicular to this. So you can, you can actually calculate eigenvectors if you have, um, you know, a clear mind about you're looking for a perpendicular vector to every row in your matrix, as you can look at it that way. But you can also solve these equations just like I did. Okay, so um, we're on step, what step are we on? Step four, general solution. All right, so step four, we write um, xy, is equal to c1 e to the minus t times my u1 vector, which was 1 minus 1, plus c2 e to the 3t times my u2 vector, which was 1, 1. And there you go. That would be a fine answer if I just asked you guys to solve this problem. If I say solve the system, I am perfectly content for your answer to look like that. Right? Now, if I ask for scalar solutions, what would I want? So this is a vector solution, right? So as a general rule of order in here, if I just ask for a solution, you're allowed to give any of the different solution formats. But if I specify a format, then you got to, you know, play the game, right? So up to this point, we've had explicit versus implicit. Now we've got like vector form versus scalar form. The scalar form of the solution is x is equal to like c1 e to the minus t plus c2 e to the 3t and y is equal to minus c1 e to the minus t plus c2 e to the 3t. So there you go. These are the, this right here is the scalar form of the general solution. And oftentimes, that's as far as we'll go. But I did, I did give us a, an initial condition this time. We, we want 1, 2 on the solution set when t equals to 0, right? So how do I figure that out? So we're given, um, you know, x comma y equals to 1 comma 2 when t is equal to 0. So that gives me. 1, 2 is equal to c1 e to the 0, 1 minus 1, plus c2 e to the 3 times 0. I just wrote it out there for a good measure, times 1, 1. Of course, the e to the 0 is, do I need to write them? No, those are 1, right? 
So I could have been more annoying, right? What if I gave you initial conditions at like time one? Well, if I did that, then there'd be exponentials in these equations. That'd be annoying, right? But I, I chose time zero because I'm because it's a fifteen. All right. So this is what we got here. Um, we got ourselves c1 plus c2, and down here we got minus c1 plus c2. At this point, I'll go back to scalar notation. I've got, you know, c1 1 equals to c1 plus c2, and I've got 2 is equal to minus c1 plus c2. So there, as I forecast, we have n equations and n unknowns. In this case, we have two equations and two unknowns. How should I solve these? Now add them, add them up. I like it. I won't tell the other math, math professors, but um, yeah. So we can't add equations. It is true. And when we do that, the C ones cancel in a blaze of well cancellation. And then um, so when I think of cancel culture, this is what I think. Um, so three halves, three halves C one. Oh yeah. Hmm. I guess I have a bias see here. I was on team C1. It's my tribalism throwing, showing through. Uh, so C, oh, still, I'm still trying to. <laughs> so C2 is 3 halves, thank you. And then what? They go back to either one, right? C1 is 1 minus C2, which is 1 minus 3 halves. Also known as one minus, minus a half. So in short, we get um, xy is equal to minus one half e to the minus t times one minus one plus um, three halves e to the three t times one one. There you go. And of course, you could collect things together and write this also as you know. I don't. I don't care. Like enough. I know you can add things together. We don't need to do that at the moment, but. Any questions? Nobody? Yeah. Uh, can we just go from the initial condition and put it into scalar form and then put it back in the vector form? So oh, oh, yeah, I just like vector form. But yes, indeed, you could also have plugged the initial conditions directly into here and obtained, you know, 1 equals C1 plus C2 and 2 equals minus C1 plus C2. Sure, there are many paths. We all have to choose our own truth, right? Truth is relative. In fact, I mean, this is just one of many answers, right? It's not really true, is it? Math, math doesn't treat post postmodernism kindly. <laughs> Let's see here. We good? What's the other problem we solved last time? Or I didn't solve, but I set up. Can you guys tell me? I had like a three by three problem. Yeah. What was it? I was going to look it up before class. I got I, for, I fell asleep, I think. I have a couple. The 3x3 three three one. Ooh, color coded. Oh, I, you should just tell me it's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 matrix. I would have known that. Let's see here. <laughs> XYZ prime <coughs> equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times XYZ. All right, that was one of the problems we had. And then, um, yeah. And then the other one, oh, was that four by four, which I can't talk about yet because I'm keeping it real. So like the, uh, the your, well, example three I can't do yet. Like last class, the one we did, example three, that's outside our 
our, our, uh, our domain. Now, let me show you what's involved here. So to solve this problem with the eigenvector method, what do we have to do to start with? Right. Let's see here. So let me start down the, the garden path over here. I have a strong suspicion we're not going to make it, though. I mean, three by three determinants are, um, well, harder. The two by two determinant, nobody should get stuck on that one, all right? That one's finding eigenvalues of a two by two matrix. No, nobody should have a problem with that. That's just a quadratic equation. It's pretty straightforward. But this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like that, right? Is that right? Did, did, I, did I number it? Okay, so we're looking at the determinant of a minus lambda i. Now here i is three by three. So we've got the determinant of one minus lambda, two, three, four, five minus lambda, six, seven, eight, nine minus lambda. All right. Huh, interesting. So for those of you who've had 221, what can you tell me about this matrix without further calculation? Well, with a little bit of calculation. If I take the difference between the rows, like row 2 minus row 1, or row 3 minus row 2, the difference between the rows is what? 333, three, three, right? That suggests to me that there's a linear dependence. I think there's a linear dependence between these rows. So I'm expecting, if I did this right, and if I haven't tricked myself, we should have, what that means is that this is not a, this is a um, uh, so-called singular matrix. It's inverse, doesn't exist. The determinant of this should be zero. If the determinant of matrix is zero, zero should be an eigenvalue for it. It's something we, we know from the theory. But it's not, a, it's not exactly evident to me yet. So let's, I mean, let's start down the path here. So we've got one minus lambda times, let's see here. So we go five minus lambda times 9 minus lambda minus 48 minus 2 times 4 times 9 minus lambda minus 42, what do you know? It's everywhere. Um, plus 3 times 32 minus um, 7 times 5 minus lambda. All right, which is um, one minus lambda times lambda squared. And let's see here, we've got minus nine, minus five, which is minus 14 lambda. And then I've got a plus 45, minus 48, also known as minus three. Now next up, I've got minus two times, let's see here, that's a minus four lambda, and I'm up against 36 minus 42. 36 minus 42 is minus six. This umbilicus is trying to get me. Plus three times, let's well, see, what do I got over there? Well, I've got a seven lambda, and I've got what, 32 minus 35, which is, yeah, because the identity matrix is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 in three dimensions. So this will always be the case. We're constructing the characteristic equation. We just subtract 
lambda from the diagonal to set up the, the characteristic equation. We did the same in the 2 by 2 case, if you look back, right, like here. I just subtracted lambda on the diagonal, but not on anywhere else. Mm -hmm. That's the pattern, yep. Any other questions? So I had 32 minus 35, I think that's minus 3. Now if I, if I, if I was right about my conjecturing, oh yeah, um, all right, let me, well let's think about this. Where, where do you get constant terms? What are the constant terms? I've got 1, right, times this minus 3. That's a, that's a minus 3, right? And then I have what? Minus 2 times minus 6, right? And then I've got this 3 times minus 3, right? So if you look at the constants, what do you got? You've got, you know, minus 3 plus 12 minus 9 equal to 0. So when I multiply this out, there is no constant term. That means that a lambda factors out, which means this problem's not that bad, actually. I mean, it's bad, but all right. Okay, so I'll work through it then. Lambda squared minus 14 lambda minus 3 minus lambda cubed plus 14 lambda squared um, plus 3 lambda plus 8 lambda plus 12 plus 21 lambda, minus 9. The constants all cancel out, and we're left with a minus lambda cubed. How many squares do I got? One of these guys, one of those guys. Looks like I've got a plus 15 lambda squared. How many lambdas do I have? Well, I got minus 14 here. I got plus 3 there. I got another 8 here, I got another 21 over there apparently. How many of those? Hmm. So that's minus 11. Minus 3. I heard an 18. I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. So plus 18 lambda. And then, again, the constants, they be canceling. Right? So while this was a kind of scary cubic equation, right, after working through the determinant carefully, we find our way to, I'll factor the minus out, minus lambda times lambda squared plus, my bad, minus 15 lambda minus 18. Does that happen to factor nicely? No worries, we can complete the square. So, this is minus lambda times lambda minus 15 over 2, quantity squared, um, minus 225 over 4, uh, minus 18. <coughs> Well, what's 18 times, 18 times 4 is what? 72, so 72 over 4. So this here is minus lambda times lambda minus 15 over, t oh man. No, we're good, we're good. Whew, I was worried. When you complete the square, right? If after you complete the square, you get a negative thing here, that's good. That means we're in the difference of squares pattern, right? Which means that the solutions are real, as per my promise to keep it real. If we'd gotten, if we had obtained something plus here, we'd be in trouble, right? For example, if you complete the square on x squared plus 4x plus 5, you get x plus 2 squared minus 4 plus 5, which is x plus 2 squared plus 1, you know, no can factor over r at least. But that did not happen. We got the difference of squares, which means that we have 15 over 2 um, plus the square root 
of 225 plus 72, also known as uh, 297. 297, there's a 2 downstairs, and then lambda minus 15 over 2 minus the square root of 297 over 2. There you go. My eigenvalues, in summary, are what? Come on. What? Are you serious? Don't be doing this to me. How dare you? Oh, it's been unplugged. <laughs> wonder if that was me. So I heard zero. Yeah, we have lambda one equal to zero, and then I'll call them lambda plus minus equal to, you know, um, minus 15 plus or minus the square root of 297 over 2. What's next? Oh, thank you. Excellent. Very good. It would. And my other sign error is <laughs> covered up by the plus minusness <laughs> of the problem. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Remember, f of c equal to zero means that x minus c is a factor, right? There's that always that flip-flopping between the um, zero versus the factor. So the next thing up here would be to actually find the eigenvectors um, corresponding to these eigenvalues, right? And it might be good for us to do at least one of them. So let's just look at the zero one. So let's try to solve, um, you know, a times u vector uh, equals to zero times the u vector, right? So that looks like for us here, um, I'll call it u1. And so since this is a three by three problem, I would let u1 be uvw, right? And so I'm trying to solve. Um, u plus 2u plus, um, my bad, let me write it out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times u v w equal to 0, right? If I was smarter, I would have written it over here because I'm about to get the projector out. How do you solve that? Three equations, three unknowns. How many solutions do we expect? It's an eigenvector problem, right? There have to be infinitely many, right? There have to be infinitely many solutions. How do you solve three equations and three unknowns? <laughs> What's the method? So, I mean, it depends on what you know. If you've had 221, maybe you know about row reduction. If you haven't had 221, maybe you know about elimination, right? Basically, your goal is to eliminate variables. So we have u plus 2v plus 3w equal to 0, and we've got 4u plus uh, 5v plus 6w equal to 0, and we've got 7u plus 8v plus 9w equal to 0. Let me call this equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. See, this time we actually, <laughs> unlike the 2 by 2 case, there's actually something to work through here, isn't there? So, what were we noticing? I told you guys about like five minutes ago. If we take the difference of the rows, something cool happens. If we subtract these equations, I think we'll get something kind of neat. So if we do 
like 2 minus 1, we get what? We get 3u, 3v, 3w equal to 0. I don't know if that really helped or not. <laughs> um, Well, anyway, uh, let me just say this. Without using um, row reduction, it would take me five minutes to work this out, and it wouldn't really be that instructive. My point to you is, you know, it's not immediately obvious how to solve this. Anybody figure it out? I'm going to use row reduction. I just, I don't even know how to, oh, man, I don't want to do it either at the moment. Ugh. It's unpleasant. I mean, this is not impossible to do, it's just I don't have enough time in class to do it, and I wanted to show you the technology. That was kind of my point of this whole example, is like, we don't really want to finish it by hand. I think I made my point um, at this point. So, um, I'll probably make an announcement today with a link to the um, website I'm about to show you guys. All of this stuff can be done in MATLAB, right? But you guys have a love-hate relationship with MATLAB from what I've observed. Um, like some of you love to hate it. And let's see here, which is unfortunate because it seems to be the dominant, come on computer, it seems to be the dominant, um, it's used a lot in industry, I'll just say that, all right? So if we go to my handy dandy website here, I'll show you guys. If we go to my website and is it working? All right. And you go down again, I'll I'll send you guys a link to this, but down, 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 down. Eventually I have some links to websites that do the math for you. Do 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 Ah, here we go. Um, Wolfram Alpha, this um, is a, this number three is great for doing row reduction. Um, so like this one, if we wanted to calculate the um, thing we're just doing, it's a three by three, right? So we could just do three by three and plug in the numbers, which were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then this will actually show you how to do the row operations. It turns out it takes like six row, five row operations, that's the five minutes. And this is how it ends up. So you get u is equal to like, I'll just say dot, 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 <laughs> u. This last one, it says u is equal to w and v is equal to minus 2w. So if I put w equals to 1, that gives me my u1 vector is 1 minus 2, 1. So after about 10 minutes of algebra, that's where we would have got on the sideboard over there. Okay, that's one thing. So this website will help you solve equations if you don't know how. Or you could just put them in Wolfram Alpha if you like, right? If you're not super good at solving linear problems, then there are tons of resources online to help you with that. So that's the one thing. But the more interesting thing is the next one. See this eigenvector calculator? This, this is a beast. I personally prefer the old version of this calculator. If you look up and it says old version of this calculator, usually you go up there and click, click that. And then, all right, let's put some, check this out. So like, here's the one we did earlier today. One, two, uh, two, one. It just spaces and enters. It automatically parses it. So, behold, we calculated this earlier. Eigenvalues minus one and three. Eigenvectors this. Eigenvectors that. Yay! We calculated that. Remember? How about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So the characteristic. Now, its characteristic polynomial, it makes it what's called monic. So I have 
chose to put minus on the lambdas rather than minus on the a. Like there's two different ways to do the characteristic equation. You can do either the determinant of a minus lambda i or you could do lambda i minus a. If you do lambda i minus a, it always leads leading coefficient is one for the polynomial. Um, so it, this is like off by a minus, but it's the same thing, right? You see that? They got like minus 15x squared uh, minus 18x, I think. And we found that one, right? And looking, lo and behold, there's that vector. See that? There's zero. And then the other ones, it works out to be this and that. Now you see what it's doing. It's normalizing them to have length one. If you take the sum of the squares of these components, you'll get one. These are vectors of length one in three dimensions. So I wouldn't ask this problem on a test because it's unreasonable, right? But I would ask it on a homework. And my intention would be for you to use this website or MATLAB or something so you can work out them numerically. All right, so that's kind of just a, if in doubt about whether you're supposed to do a problem by hand or by, you know, by technology, just ask me. I will tell you. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. So thanks.